Welcome back to my channel everyone. Hi if you're new my name is Tori. So I read 10 books in April. Two of them were audiobooks. One of them was on my Kindle. I don't say this to be dramatic or anything. April was probably one of the as a whole as a whole April was probably one of the worst reading months I've had in a very long time so with that being said let's go ahead and get right into the reviews the first book that I read in April wow was The Seclusion by Jackie Castle this is a dystopian novel and it is set in America in the far future and in this America books are considered to be a contraband item and so we have this main character Patch and she stumbles upon a van of books and from there basically everything that Patch knows about this society and its founding and just everything that she knows just kind of starts crumbling. One of the many issues that I had with this book, I do not like being, um, I don't like my hand to be held while I'm reading. I never felt comfortable in this world. I never felt like I could settle down in it. It really feels like, and you know, I get it, writing science fiction fantasy, you feel like you need to overcompensate for the information that you're giving because you're probably thinking, what if the reader doesn't understand what I'm trying to say here or try to accomplish? Or what if the world is so confusing? But there is a balance and I feel like it was not handled very well in this book. It's not a long book at all and in such a short space I feel like I was just being pounded with information that really kept me from just sitting back and letting the book kind of play out essentially. I gave that book two out of five stars. The next book that I read in April was The Test and this is by Sylvan Nouvelle. This was such a palate cleanser for the seclusion um, and Sylvan Nouvelle he's quickly becoming one of my favorite um, authors. So this is a novella. A novella? Wow. <laughs> this is a novella. We have this Iranian man who is taking the British citizenship test and while he's taking the test in the middle of it something completely crazy happens and I mean the novella just takes a like a wild wild turn. Nobody nobody will ever see this coming. I loved it so much. I love the twist on it. I feel like it's such a strong social commentary of immigrants trying to come to western countries and take these tests and like the hoops that we put them through this book it just it's like a deep dive into that but such on um, a mind-blowing level almost this novella honestly feels like an episode of black mirror i loved it so much i didn't give it a full five stars because i did feel like the the explanation behind what was going on was a little bit muddy in some places but overall this is definitely worth reading uh you can read it in one sitting in an afternoon like it's so it's so good i gave this four out of five stars the next book that i read was every harder doorway and this is by shannon mcguire this is the the first book in what is it the wayward children series the whole premise of it kind of revolves around kids who stumble into fantastical worlds what happens like you know wonderland things like that what happens to those kids when they come back to the real world how do they cope how do they adjust that kind of thing and so in this book we have a boarding school that is specifically for kids who have stumbled into you know fantasy doorways and for one reason or other they are, are they are now back in our world and don't really know how to adjust to what has happened to them that in itself is just so interesting but I think the delivery of it really did not work we got I just feel like the, the characters in here are so flat and really when the story was starting to get good the book just completely ended and I was like wow Oh, okay <laughs> like what am I supposed to do now I just also felt like it was forced diversity in here it was it was a lot of heavy-handed things happening in here that I just didn't need I didn't enjoy I gave this book a two out of five stars I'm not interested to continue on with the rest of the series and this needs to go back to the library like soon <laughs> The next book that I read in April, this was actually one that I, um, this is also from the library. These were actually due back in April, but I just kept getting them renewed. But they're due back for sure in June. Like I've reached the renewal limit, so this has to go back. So this is a book that I was listening to on Libby and also reading the physical copy of. And this is the second book in the Themis Files trilogy, and this is by Sylvan Nouvelle. So I can't talk too much about this book without spoiling things that happened in the first book, Sleeping Giants which I actually have somewhere. Um, but the basic premise of the first book leading into the second book is we have this young girl who one day she's riding her bicycle and she, bicycle, how old am I? She, one day she's riding her bike and she falls into this hole and she stumbles upon what will become this huge scientific, like global experiment sort of thing. She stumbles upon this arm and it's pretty soon you start, we start finding like bits and pieces of this thing all around the world and so that's really what book one was about and so book two is a continuation of that 
and it, it did not disappoint. I actually like this a little bit better than book one. In a similar format to the first book, this is all in interview style. Uh, we have a pretty large cast of characters. Um, and I also, that's why I really love listening to this on the audio, um, audio book form because it is a cast of characters and like all the different actors coming together is just so great. So I enjoyed this. I thought it was a really strong second book in a series and I gave this a four out of five stars. The next book that I read in April was The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and this is by Stuart Turton. I'm just gonna say it off the bat, I did not like this book. I thought it was I thought it was boring. We have this masquerade ball taking place at this mansion and the people who are hosting the masquerade ball, their daughter Evelyn Hardcastle, she is going to be murdered at like 10 p.m. 11 p.m. something like that. She's gonna be murdered at the party and one of the guests in attendance starts body hopping to body hopping in the bodies of the other guests to try to find out who is going to murder Evelyn and basically like why um, and just kind of put the clues together by living a day in people's bodies. One of my biggest issues with this book, I honestly thought it was a slow read. Things were just dragging, things were happening and I just wasn't caring. One of the other biggest things though, at the end, the end when everything was revealed, everything came about in a huge info dump kind of format, I feel like I should have been able to go back and see the foundation being laid <laughs> for the ending that we got but I really did not feel like that. I just felt like things were happening, they were irrelevant and the thing that finally did happen, I'm not even making sense right now I feel like. I just, I didn't like the book. That is really all I have to say about that. I gave it two out of five stars. The next book that I read was The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. This is a post-apocalyptic novel and it is set in this small college town in California and this strange sleeping virus starts spreading across the town causing panic and things just kind of take a turn from there. And so we have this rotating cast of characters who are living their lives in the wake of this virus that is spreading if you can call it a virus. This book has been said like if you like Station Eleven you will enjoy this book and I don't think that is entirely true. The thing that I did love about it though, I love when the writing matches the story that is being told. This is such a quiet novel and Karen Thompson Walker's prose is so beautiful and I think it fits perfectly <laughs> with the story that she is telling. I did really enjoy this. I gave it four out of five stars. The next book that I read in April was fantastic. It's one of my favorite books of all time now. I and that is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Oh my god, I love this book so much. This book is a work of nonfiction and in it we have James Baldwin writing two letters to his nephew also named James on the hundredth uh, year after, hundred years after the Emancipation Proclamation has been signed. I feel like anything I say about this book like will not do the content inside justice but essentially James Baldwin is reflecting on where we have come as a nation, where black people have come as a nation since the Emancipation Proclamation has been signed, where we are now, and looking ahead in the future. I get chills every time I talk about this book. I love it so, so much. If you want to hear me ramble and gush and smile, and I will leave a link to my um, all-time favorites video, all-time favorite books video down below. So I gave it five out of five stars. I think this is fantastic. This saved partially, <laughs> it saved a partial bit of April for me. <laughs> the next book that I read in April was actually an audiobook and that was And After and this is by Sarah Lyons Fleming. I love this series so much. I listened to this on Audible and so this is a continuation of the first book called Until the End of the World and basically this is a post-apocalyptic zombie novel. This book knows what it is. It is not trying to be something it isn't and it is just so much fun to read. This young woman, she's like 25 or whatever and she, in the first book, she is trying to find a way to break up with her boyfriend um, and then the world ends and she ends up with a group of her close friends and they are basically trying to survive the zombie apocalypse together. But I love it because it reminds me a little bit of, if you like The Walking Dead, I think you'll like this because it's more about the character relationships than it is about the zombies. But you know, the zombies are always like a factor of the world, but it's really just like group of people trying to survive and relationships building and breaking apart. And I really love this. So the second book is just a follow up to every, the mess that happened in book one. And so I think if you're looking for something fun to read and you do like the subgenre of post-apocalyptic, then you will enjoy this series. So yes, I gave this a four out of five stars and I will be continuing on with the third book. The next book that I read is one that I also really loved and that was Kindred and this is by Octavia Butler. In this book this is a work of science fiction and in it we have this uh, young black woman named Dana who she's moving into um, her new place with her boyfriend or no her husband and you know they're unpacking their boxes together and all of a sudden she starts disappearing and she is taken back to the times of slavery and 
when she lands there, she ends up saving this young white boy's life. You find out pretty quickly uh, the connection that these two share. And this is not the first or the second time that Dana is going to be called back uh, to this time period to basically keep saving his life. Oh man, this was so good. This was so good. I One of the things that I love about this, I love how seamless it is. It's like, you have no choice but to go along with what is happening because she's like, oh, I'm disappearing. I have a headache and the world is spinning open. Now I'm here. And you're like, wow, this is kind of good. You know what I mean? And like, you don't question, you don't question anything. You don't question like how it's happening or anything like that. It's just so, it's so seamless and so well done. And I love the fact that you are just immersed almost immediately in what is happening. I could see people not liking this because it, it, it was written in like the 70s and in a lot of places the dialogue especially feels kind of stilted. But I think if you can look past that and just really get into it, you will love this book. Um, I gave this book five out of five stars. All right, here we are, the last book of the video. Oh, Lord. Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I did not like this book at all. I will say the first 150, 70 something pages, I was in love. I was just fascinated by the world and the characters and the adventure. And I was just like, yes, this is fantastic. And I was living, I was just like, this is great. And it was also a challenge to like for me too, because of how almost dense the writing style is. And I was really, this book really like forces you to pay attention to what is happening. And I was here for it. But unfortunately that feeling cannot be sustained for 600 pages of, or over 600 pages of this. In this book, we are following this character named Tracker who is known for having just a strong nose. And he, he's almost like a, I don't know what you call them, but he, he does like little menial tasks for people like finding cheating husbands and lost stuff and he uses his nose to do that. Well, one day Tracker is given this assignment to go on this adventure with this other band of misfits essentially to find this lost child. And this is not a spoiler, but in the very on the very first page in the first sentence, Tracker tells you that the child is dead. So in that case, you're thinking, okay, well, this is going to be more of a of a how did we get here sort of story. Like it's more about the journey than it is the end goal, that sort of thing, right? This book is so convoluted. The story is non-linear and that's fine. I love stories that are not told in any sort of like linear fashion. It's fine if you jump all over the place. However, when a story is non-linear, I do also hope and sort of expect that at least the writing will not get in the way of the non-linear plot that is happening. Marlon James does not do that. <laughs> Marlon James's writing is so dense and so let's call it what it is. In some places it is a little pretentious. That's fine. I don't mind that at all. However, the writing style does not work with the way the story is being told, in my opinion. And essentially this is all happening against the backdrop of this really detailed African inspired fantasy world. Um, like I said, after those 150 pages, we, I hit a real speed bump and it just started going downhill from there. And there were parts that I was just making myself turn the page because it is convoluted. It is a convoluted book. What I did love, I love the idea behind it that you don't know who to believe, you don't know what story to believe. There, are, It's like the idea that there are two sides to every story. You can't take one thing to be 100% true, that sort of thing. So there was a lot of that going on. So that was intriguing. But overall, it just, it I didn't, I didn't vibe with the book like I thought I would, like I was doing in the very beginning of it. So I gave this book a two. Initially, I gave it a three out of five star, but then I knocked a star off because I was just thinking about it and just getting angrier. <laughs> so I knocked another star off. So I, I ended up overall giving this book a two out of five stars. Um, and there are other books that are coming out in the series. And essentially, it's going to be the exact same event, but told from other characters' perspectives. And I don't really care. That was probably, that's probably the most two stars I've ever given in one month, which was pretty surprising. And it just kind of, the the not so great books just really took a toll on the month overall and really started impacting how I was feeling about the good books that I was reading. And I was just, oh gosh. So you know what? I'm going to look at the silver lining that I did get some great books out of the month um, and I'm having a great May. So we'll just put it behind us and keep pushing forward. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.